What I want to tell you is uh, I, was, I was working four years in Mexico and the interesting thing is how the environment is changing the possibilities what you are doing. So I was living in the mountains um, uh, 70 kilometers south of, of Mexico City and when it was raining the scorpions came in the house. Yeah? So there's a lot of nothing to be really afraid of because they don't do anything. I had only one accident with a scorpion. It was not me, it was my beagle. And um, um, the secret is Timex. Timex is the medication you have to have at home. So one of my dogs have been stung by a scorpion. It results in epileptic uh, seizure. Yeah, it's, it's, really, it's really ugly. And um, then the dog stands in front of you and falls on the side, you know, blap, like a suitcase. It's, I don't want to see this again, but then you have to open the mouth of the dog and you cannot use a screwdriver, of course, you have to do this in a human way. So it's all cramped up. So you open the mouth, you put the Tamex in and after maybe 40 seconds, everything goes back to normal. So. Uh, it was, it's not, the black scorpion is, is, is not deadly, it's, it's like a bee, bee sting, so two, three bee stings, of course, it's, it's, but it's, it's nothing happened. If you go to Arizona and you have the red, is it out again? Next. Next. See, a little back. Happens in my class all the time, too. Is it right? On? Yep. Back, back on piece. OK. Um, so it's, 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 it's the black scorpion. It, the red scorpions are not good. And I was living in a very interesting area. It's, it's, it's Cuernavaca, it's Spring City. It has always the same temperature. However, it has three stages, so it's cold, 20 something, uh, I mean 20 C, uh, so that means it's in 40s, 50s, all, and then you go and then you have 70 down. No? I can start to shout a little bit. Do you hear me? Yeah. All right. Go for it. Go for it. This is not like um, I don't know. It's, it's, I cannot run for president. I'm not born in this country, so don't don't be afraid. It's, it's, it's almost like it's, it's it's interesting. I was never doing this. Okay, um, yeah, and it, it, so in, in, when the rain, the rain came, the, the scorpions came in. So what you do to get, the, this it was a living sample. Do you know, I was in the semiconductor industry. If, if you buy gallium arsenide, it's more expensive than gold. Yeah? Gallium arsenide wafers are very expensive. If you got some, keep them, wait 20 years and then sell them, okay? So it's, it's, it's going up. So, but the scorpions have been for free. So samples coming to your home for free. This, isn't this? Yeah. And you couldn't do this in, um, there have been grayfish, but I, I didn't have this idea when I was here in Ohio, I was always running the grayfish, but I didn't do anything with the grayfish, but then the scorpion came. So, well, how to get it? It's a, it's, a living, it's a living sample. So you cannot put a living sample on a glass plate if this is still doing something, you cannot measure reflection, yeah, because the guy is moving. So you, you change, you change um, of course, the so. You take a plastic cup, most of the time they have been on the ceiling, the ceiling was not so high, so, but um, nature was pretty good to me, so most of the time I don't need any equipment, so I just take a plastic. You kick a little bit the tail and it's falling in the plastic um, um, cup. Then what you do, that um, you, can, you can keep it, you put it in the deep fridge. They don't like deep fridge, so. And they die very humane, so you don't, you don't have to do some, with some equipment, you don't have to do this, so they, are, they don't move anymore. After two, three days, you take them out, you put them on the glass, and you can measure them. 
So I really don't know how the idea came up. <coughs> Suddenly I said to my wife, why we don't put this guy in the laser beam? <laughs> Too much German beer. <laughs> I have no idea. So it, it came up. It came up. There was no, I'm, I'm, I'm not a big reader. I do things, just I do it. So we didn't read millions of, of papers about scorpions. And then it turned out we haven't been the first one. We have been the first one doing this, but, but they have been already an interest. And they have several eyes. I mean, this, this creature is, is fascinating. They have, sev they have more than two eyes. They can live one year without anything. They're just hanging there. One year, they don't need water, they don't need anything, so they, they are coming out of the water, but they don't like the water anymore. They are very elastic, yeah? You know this, what is this called, this harmony, um, this, this instrument from the Alps? The same thing, this, the, according to this, the, you can do this and the, the flip back, so don't overdo Hooke's law, you know, so if you go over Hooke's law, but in, in principle, they are very, very elastic. So, the idea was born, and is this the red? Okay. Uh, I have to do it here, maybe, right? Yeah. This is a female, female scorpion. You know, in this part of, of nature, the females are big, the men are small. Yeah. Not always, but but it's 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 and it, it's it's an animal. It's not an insect. It's, it's, it's an animal, so a cow, a dog, a sheep, a scorpion is the same thing. It's an animal. So, and they give life birth. I mean, it's, it's, it's okay, maybe I should move on because otherwise I speak till Sunday. Um, um, they, 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 the females are bigger because the kids are sitting on the back. Yeah? So they give life birth and then it's a little bit creepy if you see a scorpion on the ceiling with 20 scorpions on the back, because then you, you, you have to do something, because you don't want to have 40, 50, 60 scorpions running around. And, and, and in the end of the day, they are a little bit, I mean, you see this in the back, so this is, this, they stay like this, so if you open the door and the scorpion is there, they're already waiting. <laughs> I saw this several times. So this is, this is a scorpion layout. It's maybe this length, so what is this, six centimeters, or so roughly two inches, two, whatever. And um, more than, they have four eyes, at least four eyes, and they see different <coughs> frequencies. They see different frequencies. So they see more in the blue, more in the red, and they have here more than one eye. And it's one of the oldest, the oldest creatures on this planet. They are I don't know, they are older, they are, they are older than the planet. They are, they are old. They are very old. And as I said already, they are coming out of the water like everything, but they don't like water anymore. So if you go to Mexico, if it happens to you and it's raining, be aware the scorpion is coming to you. You don't have, so the sample is coming to you. So for free, this is what I said already, so it's very nice. So this is the, this is the layout. And you see already, this is the, their guide, and, and so what we did. And the interesting thing was to measure the reflection so of, of the scorpion skin. Yeah. If, if, if you have questions and you want to interrupt me, feel free to do this. So now I have to push the red button. <laughs> I hope nothing is exploding. No? Is it this one? It, it's, it's, yeah. I measure with locking amplifiers from 1967. This uh, Princeton Applied Research 124A, it's the best locking amplifier I ever built. This was when they did Apollo 11, 12, 13. And it's analog, no digital, no cheating. Everything analog. What is measured here was measured with a locking amplifier from 1967. I was born already, at least. <laughs> so you see there, there, are a lot of, there are a lot of details. This, this is the scorpion tail to, to show you what, what, 
what's going on, so they can feel things, they sense things. I don't know what is with the smelling of a scorpion, if, if, if they have, so maybe it was never, there was no research on it, so I don't know. So, um, anyways, it's, it's, a highly, it's a highly interesting creature, and I think people stay away because um, maybe it's, 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 it's a problem of education. I was never really in, in living things, yeah? Dead matter, yeah? Cadmium sulfide, gallium arsenide, electronic circuits, whatever, everything is dead. I was never really um, to measure the heartbeat of a dog, yeah? just to make a simple example. No, we, so it is, it is so, and then I had to, to go to the threshold that you, you can explore something living if it was not living anymore because you cannot do this, I explained this already, the guy cannot move. So it, it, it's, it's, it's a movement, yeah? So I'm, I'm a hardcore physicist, solid state physics, so solid state, even liquids have been out of, up besides, I mean, the German brewery support. Um, uh, but it was never really, um, so you know what I mean. So you have to make a transition, so you, you move on to investigate something living. So this one. So um, the females, I told you already, they are, um, this was Sam. We always give, give names to the, to the guys, so this was Sam. So we had, we had a lot of uh, Charlie, Sam, Peter, and so on. We, we collected them, so I have maybe 20 scorpions in, in, the, in the drawer. And, um, they, and, and there's nothing really, um, they're just hanging out there. This is like, like a leather, a leather something, but what you have, so <clears throat> there's no problem, so they just stay the same, more or less. One was hanging in a spider net for one year in my home. It didn't change. It didn't change. So it was in the, in the spider net. So, so you see, these are um, these are centimeter. Yeah. So, um, anyways, so you see, it's it's six to seven centimeters. A female, a male is half the size. So it's maybe three three point five. And as I said, the 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 kids are sitting on on the back. Yeah, up to twenty. They give live birth and then they are walking around and they're pretty aggressive, of course. You know, I mean, this is how it goes in, 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 the, in the fauna and flora, fauna. Um, so never cross, never cross a female with kids. It's, it's a bad idea. So um, and it's the same here. They're re really up immediately. And, and so, well, anyway, so you see these are six centimeter. So this was one of the scorpions we investigated. And we glued, we glued them down so that they, of course, to, to keep them. And this, we already know, after three, four days in the deep fridge, so it didn't move. Uh huh, okay. So, it, as I told you, how the idea came up, I, I, I don't remember. So, it's, it's pretty much unknown. Of course, people in Texas, it's a good scorpion country, and you never can cross Texas. I did it once. Yeah. <laughs> Exit 860, and you're still not done. Yeah, it's, it's, I, was, I was driving from, from, from Toledo, Ohio, to, to Mexico City. It, it took four days. Yeah. Four days. Yeah, it, and, 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 and 72 hours of these four days was Texas. Yeah. So it, 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 it's endless and, and hot. I mean, it, it, it's impossible. <coughs> so Texas is a good, um, we found some papers from Texas, Arizona, and of course, Mexico. So this is the region of the scorpions. So the unknown optical material. Unknown, there haven't been a lot of things um, um, with, with, done with scorpions, only one thing. This is also interesting, they emit greenish light. So, you know these UV lamps, what the people have to check the dollar note if you give them some fresh printed or it's maybe a true one, so you never know that they run this with this. So, and if, if you expose a scorpion to this UV light, you see a green from the skin. So they, they have, they have um, they, it's a photoluminescence is coming from the scorpion skin. People don't know. This is one of these, I don't know, miracles of nature. So, 
they really don't know why a scorpion is doing this. I don't know. So you, you can find them easily. You go out in the desert in Texas in the night. You have a, you, everybody has a UV lamp, of course, it's, it's standard equipment. And you go around and you see the scorpions. So this is how they find them. I had it easier in the mountain in Mexico. They came to me, so I didn't, didn't need a UV lamp. So. Um, this, this, this was the only thing done with scorpions, so this, this, they have a greenish emission. And we show here the first results of scorpion bodies exposed to monochromatic light. Then we put it in a laser, I think, no worries. This is the advantage, you know, um, chemists, they do chemistry most of the time, physicists, they do the physics, and the bio people, they do the bio thing. But um, now the field is changing, so um, I was drifting more and more in the bio thing suddenly, but I have the advantage that I, I had a laser practically in my pocket. So um, normally people don't do this. Yeah. So this, you know what I mean? That, that just because why should the biologist suddenly have a laser? No, most of the time they don't. But I had a laser. Then I started to read. Yeah. What is awful, but you have to do it. So and then okay, let's let's do it. So. So we, we did all these this, this investigations, and then we found the photocurrent of a scorpion, epicuticle. This is called epicuticle, Latin, Latin rules, Latin, yeah, <laughs> two years Latin. Six cases, it's six too much, it doesn't matter. So nonlinear optical properties have been observed, and the scorpion skin shows some infrared emission in addition to the blue-green, most more, more likely. So we, we found some new things, and we uh, summarized this here, and we also measured photocurrent. So you have two effects of interest. This is emission. Yeah, you excite optically or electrically material, and light is coming out. This is emission. Photocurrent is if you change the resistance of a material between two contacts with the light. This is photocurrent, and this is emission. So these two, these two things you have. And as I said, please feel free to interrupt me. Um, if I can, I, I answer a question. Can, can I ask a quick one? Sure. Is the infrared emission because it's reprocessing the laser light, or is it some other effect? I think it's a, a cascading. It's a polymer. It's a po it, basically, the guy is a polymer. Okay. It's a natural polymer, and you have different levels in this polymer. You bump it up, mm -hmm. then the charge is jumping down, and suddenly it's emitting. And I don't know about phonons and all this. I, I had some ideas. Yeah, so. It, it was a heavy fight. It was a heavy fight to publish this. We have one paper, and and it it, it went through in the end. But it was it it was a long time. It doesn't matter. So this is a photodiode in the black box behind the scorpion. You see maybe the silicon thing in the in the window. Yeah, so it's it's it's. And in optics, everything is black, you know, so it's, it's dark, dark matter you, you deal with, yeah, because you don't want reflections, so everything is covered in black. So you see this black surface, and I put the silicon diode in this, and then we put the wires out, and so. And for instance, this is a he knee laser, you see a little bit red, 632.8 nanometers, so this is. A Hini, 1.96 electron volt in energy. So this is a Hini laser, one of the oldest lasers, I think, from 1961. So this was the one, the first laser built. And it's, it's, it's a standard laser you use in, in, in physics. So we exposed it, of course, to the, to the red light first. And we measured the transmission, reflection, and all kind of, of things. So you see a typical um, arrangement here. The, the, the scorpion is on the glass plate, and behind is the silicon diode, the silicon photodiode, and um, for instance, for the, for the transmission measurement. Then we did the same in the reflection, and so on and so forth. So I think this was Sam, or whatever, so one of these, and the female sign. So because we didn't know, is the skin of a male and a female the same? Who knows? I mean, I don't know. Science is not forgiving. You can think a lot, but if you want to know, you have to know. So we don't know, we didn't see a difference so far, but it's not sure if this is exactly the same. So I have to go to the next. Yeah, it's again a picture to, to give, an, uh, give you an idea how this, how this looked like. So the, the silicon diode in the, in the aluminum box yeah, with, the black, with the black front side 
and you see the laser spot if you look um, exactly. And we try to measure really the belt from the, uh, from the scorpion skin. You know this is this like a belt, then there's some um, other part in between and then and so on. We try to stick to the belt, to the belt-like appearance. So you see it is, it, the laser spot is on, on this part of the skin. Then we really wrote down what we did. So maybe, because maybe this, this belt regions have also different features. So you, you don't know. If you explore this new, you have to really check this out. So Sam was exposed to the laser. So this is a scorpion in the laser beam. Here you see the lock-in amplifier from 1967 in the back. This is the thing with the knobs, yeah. 124A, PR, PAR, Princeton Applied Research, I think. So, and we measured everything analog. So we, we put it out to a digital reader. <laughs> I have, there's some commitment you have to do, unfortunately, yeah. So, um, um, but we didn't use a cell phone. We, we did, no, we, but we had a computer. So the, you can, you have a, a readout from zero to 10 volt. It goes to the back of a locking amplifier. So if one of you will face this problem, you can still do it. So you have the locking amplifier, then you go to a, I don't make commercial, but most likely to a Keesley. So then you read the zero to 10, and then you have the readout, and then you can go to the computer. This is how we did it. So again, a silicon diode, you see this, this blue holder. So we had different silicon diodes on the optical table. This was all measured down in Kurnevaka in the Institute of Sciences Physicas, the UNAM. Yeah? So, and it was reflection. So we, we, we tilt the scorpion. A chopper, if, if you have lock-in technique, you need a chopper. Should I explain a little bit lock-in technique or everybody's sleeping already? <laughs> yeah, I, I take this as a yes. So, Lock-in is lock-in, like, like you close a door, you have the deadlock, you lock the door. So a lock-in amplifier is locking in what you really want to measure. So you chop, you chop the optical source, for instance, with a certain frequency. Then the lock-in amplifier sees this frequency and makes the phase accordingly, and this is completely decoupled from the stray light. So, therefore, if you measure with a lock-in amplifier, don't use 60 hertz as your um, chopping frequency because then you have the harmonics of all your surrounding in the signal. So use 13.7, this is a good one, yeah, or 57.9, something. So not, not, not 120, not 60, not 30, and, and, not 20, and so on. So, so the local amplifier is doing this. So therefore we had the chopper in front. You see this wheel here? Yeah, it's, it's this part. This is the chopper. Yeah. So, and we chop this, I think, with 27 or, or whatever, so, so some, some odd, uh, not a harmonic from, from, from 60. Then we, we, the, the laser was guided through the chopper. The signal was fed in the, in the local amplifier, and we measured here in this example, we measured the reflection. So you see, it's, I think you, this is a laser device, right? Yeah. It's almost like a hini, so it's the same color. So this, this came through in here, then here you see the spot here, then in the diode. So, and this was, this was a silicon diode. Berkeley nuclear contacts, BNC, is going to the lock-in amplifier. Here's the lock-in. Here you can adapt the phase yeah, with this guy. So you have the internal and the external, so you have to put the lock-in amplifier exactly on the phase. Um, then the new one is just map one, you know this is internet thing, yeah, so you push one button, it's done. Here you have to adapt this guy, so you have really to do it yourself. So, and this, this goes, it's a pretty big thing, so, and, and here this was for the, for the transmission, and this was for the reflection. We had two locking amplifiers. You see the foot, footage here, this was a second locking amplifier on top, the same one from 1967. So we had two, one was for the transmission, one was for the reflection. One trick in science, we have, take it home now, and you can see Bruno is a great guy. I learned a lot today. Always measure everything in one step because the sample might move. You don't know what happens. 
I don't know, an earthquake, in, it, uh, there have been earthquakes in Cuernavaca, the lamp came from the ceiling, yeah. Um, but if you have been in Tokyo, it doesn't matter, we are used to this. So. I was seven years in Japan, so I mean, the bathroom was coming out, it, it's all right. Whatever. So, uh, so measure coincident, everything in the same time. So if you measure reflection transmission, do this, if possible, in the same time. Two local amplifiers, one chopper, and you read the signal one to one. So not tomorrow the reflection and today the transmission, this, this is, is not the way to do it. Yeah. Login amplifier one, login amplifier two. You see the, the Kisley, then here this is a, a pico ampere meter. This is the chopper, it was on 65 here, so it's not a harmonic of 20. The, the, this, the power was feeding in here, this is the chopper, this is the Hini, this is the Hini laser. So then we had stray light problems, so we just put this away here, and then it, it went to the sample. So you see, um, we had banana connections, and it's, it's, ground is very important, ground, ground, ground. People, ground is the trick. You have to have a good ground if you measure something. If you don't have a good ground, you cannot measure. Sometimes the login amplifier doesn't find the phase, so what you can do is you plug it in somewhere else because you have a ground connection where the, where the earth, dirt, so you know everything is grounded, but this goes somewhere and it's coming back. So you can plug it in somewhere else, yeah, because you have a ground loop. Somewhere in this, you know, if you plug it in here, this is, is grounded, but it goes some, and so it's very, very tricky, but, but this, so we had a, we grounded this on one spot. You should ground it on one spot. Yeah? So this was for the transmission, this was for the reflection. Here we have been reading out this. And then we had a connection to the computer. I see an optical table, handmade in, 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 in Mexico. I had a neighbor from Canada. You know, you hook up with people. My Spanish is practically like my Korean. Not so good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's all right. And he, sp he spoke English, <laughs> yeah, so he was not from the French, he was from the English side of Canada. And this guy did this for me because he was so, so happy to work with me. He did the optical rails, can you imagine? He did this in his basement for me. I said, Bob, I need an optical rail. He said, yeah, what do you need? No problem. And he did this and two days later, he so this, this, this is how it works in Mexico. So it was an optical rail um, handmade by the guy. This was handmade. All this is handmade, yeah. <laughs> he, he did this just with, with a drill, an uh, uh, outstanding person. So, and, and the, also this optical plate he did for me. Uh, what was this in the back here? Yeah, very important. Here in this country, you don't have this problem. In Mexico, you have a lot of problems because the power is on. It's like a disco, you know? It's practically like, do you remember the 80s when, when you have to, no, I shouldn't say this if I look at the, I look at you. Do you remember the 80s? <laughs> Yeah, when they have, yeah, yeah. See, this is practically like in Mexico. Yeah, the power is on, off, on, <laughs> off, and you can rap to this. Yes, yeah, so on, off, on, off. So we have a, we had a buffer. We had a buffer. It's also not good, you know, if you sh shut down on and off your computer thing. Yeah, I mean the computer is maybe dying. Yeah. So we had a we had a battery buffer. So what you do is you have this in between, and you you like a like a diesel, practically like a generator. So. Um, uh, the small version of a generator, this was this guy here and it was buffering if we have a power fluctuation or the power was going up, yeah? It should be 120, but suddenly it was 140 or 60, 80. I was, I was measuring this at home. I said, okay, in five minutes, everything burns here. That's all right. So, uh, uh, and then it was going down, up. So, all right, so with this, we could, we could stabilize the, the, the power. So, Non-linearity, um, we agreed upon we don't do much science, right? So it's a, it's a K3 non-linearity. Just take it home and then you can, maybe in Wikipedia, you can Google it, K3 non-linearity. This doesn't mean it goes with the power three, it goes with the power two. Science is always, always misleading, you know, you have, but it means something else. So this is the incoming, yeah? So going back. 
This is the incoming. So what we have been shooting on the poor guy. So the scorpion was exposed to the incoming. And we measured the reflective, uh, reflection of, of the scorpion skin. Very interestingly, um, also what we did, we, we measured fresh scorpions. The Texas guys, they, 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 I, don't, I don't know, they have been 19 years in, in, in acid or something. So I don't know what they did. You know, they, they collected the scorpions and they put this, you know, in this, like the grandmothers have the, <laughs> the or something in here. Yeah, so, and then they took it out. So I think it was more than 10 years, 15 years. But we had the scorpion. We put the scorpion on the glass and we measured it practically a week later. All this what I show you is measured within a week to two weeks. So this have been practically more or less alive uh, scorpions. So the reflection, it's, it, you see it's nonlinear. So you increase the incoming and you don't have a straight line. You have a, a bounce, whatever, so nonlinear. Uh, and very notable, what we always saw this plateau here. The plateau was the, the, from the transmit from the body. So we don't know was this still the body liquid in the guy, yeah, or what was going on. But every scorpion what we measured, and I think we measured four or five, something like this, it has the plateau in the, in the transmission, and the reflection was going up. And this goes with a square, pretty much with a square, so it's a chi 3 nonlinearity. Nonlinearity is very, very important because you can make optical switches. Optical switches have been a very, very hot topic during maybe Reagan, I don't know, um, because it's EMP hard. You know what is EMP hard? A a electromagnetic pulse hard. So the good thing is you cannot stop an optical computer. So if you drop the bomb, the computer is still working because a photon doesn't have a charge. It's not influenced. If you, have, if you want to start a car, probably it's a bad idea. You're too late anyway. So <laughs> if the bomb is, it doesn't start anymore because nowadays everything is with electronics. A Volkswagen from 1966 would maybe start because there's no electronics in it. Yeah? Three screws. Three screws so you can change the engine. You cannot do this anymore. Yeah, so uh, this is EMP hard, so therefore they've been very interested in optical switches. And of course, you, now it's coming back because we have fibers and so on and so forth. So you can use this to make optical switches. So therefore, it's of interest. I have to find the right. So scorpion exposed to monochromatic light. You know the difference, so laser is coherent. Monochromatic light is also one color, but it doesn't mean it's a laser light. Laser, do you know what laser stands for? What does laser mean? You don't remember? Me too. <laughs> do you remember? Who knows? Yes, sir. Light amplification by stimulated emission and radiation. You have an A. Yeah. <laughs> Light amplification by stimulated the emission of radiation. This is laser. I think invented by Bell, Bell Labs, uh, I think 1960 or something. And if I'm not mistaken, they, they sold, or was it the transistor, they sold the patent to Japan for $1 or something. Was, this, was it the laser? Was it the It was the laser. Yeah, yeah. All right, so this is the laser. There's also a sailboat called the laser. So this is the sailboat and then this is, okay. This is monochromatic light. So a monochromator is you have a prism or you have a grating. So you, you, you create the rainbow, you know, dark side of the moon, Pink Floyd. I always, I always look to the wrong <laughs> I've never heard Pink Floyd the entire life, maybe. Dark side of the moon, you have the rainbow. So this is, this is what you do with a monochromator. So you have monochromatic light, but not a laser light. So why we need monochromatic light? If, if, you, want, if you want to see the effect of a, a certain energy range, you, you need a monochrom. A laser has one. Yeah, OK, you have one. Yeah, OK, but, but then you have only one point. Yeah, so, but you want, OK, so we, we have been scanning this. and. We try again to, to st stick to the belt, but then you, have, um, then you have a focus from the lens and so on and so forth. Uh, this is also the next trick what I can tell you. If you build optics, don't build it with a lens, build it with a mirror because the focus doesn't change. With a lens, the focus is changing. 
because you have, you know, red light, green, and so. Yeah, well, well. These are the tricks. This. You will learn a lot today. So you all go home and build in the garage, the photo current setup, and you start already today. You go to A's and Bowling Green, I don't know where you go. So you have all the screws and everything. <laughs> yeah, this was in Mexico City. Um, this is a magnet. We also did some experiments with the magnet. This was one of my colleagues there, so now he's in Scotland. And we, we had different equipment here, so this was the power supply for the, for this, the, 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 the magnet. This is an optical table, you know, this is like a, I always say it's like a bee house, yeah, so it, it, it damps the vibration of the, of the building, so at least the people hope so, so then this is on, 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 on air, vibration air, and um, this is a fiber here. This blue thing is a fiber, it's not a cable, it's a fiber, and we use this here, Stellarnet, I don't make commercials, so you have two companies, I think, so it's um, Ocean Optics and, and Stellarnet. And I think the man who founded Ocean Optics opt out and now it is Stellarnet, so it's, it's pretty, pretty decent devices you, you can use. So you go with the fiber there and you can measure the emission. And all is in here, this is a practical monogrammator in here. Measured spectra. Reflectance, photoluminescence. So you see the photoluminescence, this was, this was known. Yeah? So some people have been measuring this before. So we, we um, um, excited this with, with the pulsed laser and the UV. So the excitation was somewhere here. So this was, this was the laser. And then um, we, we saw the photoluminescence. And with the monochromator, we have been scanning through here. So the photon energy, and we could measure the reflection. So, as I said, the laser we used for the emission, and then we had to, to scan the spectrum for, for um, um, to, to have the function over energy. So this is the reflection. You see here a dip. And in solid state physics, this dip should correlate to this one. And this is called the Stokes shift. Stokes shift is from Mr. Stokes, Great Britain. And he figured this with with atoms that you have a red shift. This is, this is practically a consequence of energy conservation. So you cannot have the emission exactly the same as the absorption. So you always lose something. So you bump it, and then um, you have a little stoke shift between the absorption and the um, emission. You see this here. So we believe, I say we believe, most, most likely. So this dip here correlates to this. Uh, maximum and this dip is, is this emission. And the new thing here is that it has maybe emission also here in the, in the infrared. This is UV, 2.5 is pretty greenish, then you go to the red, the orange, red, or orange, red, and then you come to the, to the um, near infrared. And I think this, these kind of things haven't been measured before. So people didn't bother really to measure the reflection transmission. They only came with the UV light, broad, broadband um, excitation, and measured the emission. We first, first thing also what we did is to expose it to, to a pulsed laser and to really figure out the photoluminescence. UV emission spectrum used, uh, we also used um, not only the, the laser, we used also UV light, and we measured the um, emission spectrum of the UV light. So it's a typical um, dollar checking UV light. So you see here 3.3, this is pretty much in the UV, and this is the typical emission of, of a UV lamp. So this lamp we have used, we have used a laser, we have used a monochromator, and we have used a UV lamp. RT means room temperature, so this was all at 300 Kelvin. All measurements are at 300 Kelvin. Most inter interestingly for me was the photocurrent. So we, what we did, I show this, I think in the next picture, one of the pictures coming, we cut off the tail, a piece of the tail. You remember the tail in, in the very beginning. So we cut it off and we put silver contacts on, on the tail. So you have this silver um, um, you know, liquid, so it's some you know, solution. 
and you make two spots, and of course they should not connect, otherwise you have a shortcut, so you make two spots as close as possible, and then you can measure the photocurrent. So the photocurrent is, I told you already, you shine light between the two contacts what you have on the piece of sample. In this case, it was the tail of a scorpion, and you measure the photocurrent. And we did this with the UV light intensity, so the lamp was there, so we didn't scan the spectrum. It was exposed to this, to this emission. So we, we took this lamp, which we happened, the scorpion was exposed to this, to this emission, and then we measured the photocurrent. So first nothing happened. This was practically a dark current. So you, you call it the dark current and the photocurrent. Dark is practically in the dark, really in the dark. So you close everything, it's dark. And then of course you have a threshold. So you, you start the experiment, but it's still in the dark practically, so the light is not sufficient to create some change in the material. And then suddenly it started to uh, increase, and you see here the current nanoamp. So we measured this with a, with a picoamperometer, so we had nanoamp, so 10 minus 9. So this is uh, approaching the micro scale. And this was the incoming intensity. We changed this. Uh, you can move the lamp away, and you can coming closer and you change the intensity of the, of the exposure of, of, of the sample. So this was the dark threshold and then we saw here the photocurrent is coming up. Yeah, we, we did different, different. This, this is a little bit uh, maybe, I don't know what happens here because normally some people here in the, in the audience said, uh, if you increase the field, the photocurrent should increase. It, it didn't do this here. You have, here it's pretty, so you see the dark current is, you have, a, you have a gap here, you see the difference. Here the gap is already more in the wishful thinking, I call this. Yeah, you know, if, if you're a scientist and, and you're waiting for something, then the, you should be very careful that you don't create a wishful thinking, yeah? Ah, that's it! And most of the time it was not, yeah, it's just something else, so, you know, some from radiation from the sky, well, so whatever. So you have to be very, very careful. So wishful thinking is, is, is one feature. It went away when I was, I think, around 30, because you, you this is a long time ago, you, you, you give it up. You, you know this is life, this is reality, there is no wishful thinking. So this is just how it is. And, and here, I think this is almost wishful thinking so that we have a photocrine. Definitely here there's no photocrine anymore. Normally, if you increase the field, the electric field, volt per length, volt per centimeter electric field, you should have more photocurrent. But this guy doesn't have this because it's a polymer. And organics is more complicated than dead matter. Yeah? You put something organic here, you go to Aldi, you come back, everything is different. Yeah? Because, I don't know, something happened. You put gallium arsenide here, you go to the Himalaya for expedition for 50 years, you're coming back, it's exactly the same. Not with organics. So organics is, yeah, this is, do you agree with me, Joe? Organics is more, more complicated, yeah. So, uh, you know, it, 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 you have more interaction with, with, your, with your surrounding. You have polymer, the tem or you put it in the sun, it's, it's, it's different, and there's, uh, it's called optical fatigue. Op fatigue, c'est pas le français, c'est fatigue. It's always much better, right? So we call it fatigue. So um, the optical fatigue, so that means you expose a material to, to, to light and it's changing even, even you don't really want to do this or you don't know it's changing. And I think this is what happens here. So the UV light was on this and the UV light here and here and with the time it, it, it created a memory. So you can also call it a memory, the optical fatigue is a memory. So that means this, that the material is saturated, you have excited charges yeah, then these charges go somewhere in a bucket and they are staying there and they're not coming out anymore. So therefore you don't have a photocurrent. Is this okay, my explanation, or was it too much in loops? Because for me, you know, I'm Mr. Photocurrent. I have the wrong name. I'm not Ulrich, I'm Mr. Photocurrent. So I, I do this since 35 years. So for me, it's, it's... But you understand what I mean. So if you excite a material, you, you have to generate a charge, then the charge should go in the field to the contact. If it doesn't reach the contact, it didn't happen. 
you don't see the photocurrent. And now you can imagine if this charge is excited, but it, it's trapped somewhere, somewhere in between these contacts, before it reaches the contact, then you cannot measure it anymore. Is this okay? Okay. I know I'm a good teacher. So, and, and this happened here. So I think we exposed this here. We pretty much took out what is possible. And then it was more and more was trapped. And, and definitely here, nothing was going on anymore. Error. This is also, I don't know why this is called error bars. So this is my next lesson to you. So now this is, it's uncertainty. Because error bar means there's an error. An error is if you measure with an ampere meter voltage, this is an error. Don't do this, you ruin the equipment. This would be an error, yeah? Error is if you make a left turn, but you should make a right turn. This is an error. This is not error, it, but I don't know what the science community wants to call this error bars. This is uncertainty. But I think uncertainty is, is with Heisenberg. I don't know why. So you always think about quantum mechanics. But in principle, this is the uncertainty. There's no error. So I didn't do any mistake. <laughs> so it is the uncertainty bar. And it's a very important thing. Because um, if it's a little bit harsh, every measurement not showing uncertainty is practically not real done because you should show what was the uncertainty of your, of your measurements. You see the uncertainty here, you see the uncertainty here, and of course it was, we measured this three, four times, then you can make the statistics and so on and so forth. So this is the, this is the photocurrent story. Can I ask a quick question? Sure, go ahead. Did you check to see if there was any kind of a hysteresis effect? If you waited a while and tried it again, did you see the same thing? You, uh, it was changing, and there was a hysteresis effect, yes. I think it's really called the optical fatigue, like cadmium sulfide. So I should, I should take away a little bit this from organic and inorganic. There are also some inorganic materials, pretty nasty, if I put it this way, this cadmium sulfide. Yeah, so it's also changing because it's, it's, it's a 2.6, it's a 2.6, two, six, three, five, two, six, you know. You have, uh, but this guy was really definitely, there was something going on. And it's a polymer. It's, it's a multi-shaped polymer. And I think it's different layers. So it's like an onion. Yeah? I mean, the guy is complex. This is complex. Yeah? And I wanted to contact a chemist and, and take this thing apart and, and look really what is in the skin. Yeah? So the footprint, the DNA <laughs> analysis. Yeah, this, this was one of the sample, yeah. So do you see? Yes, we did this, but it, it was not, it was different. So this is this, this is this memory effect. And I, I truly believe you, you, you excite the guy and then the scorpion says, I don't want anymore. Yeah, you can excite what you want. I don't have charges left. Yeah, we, this was done, um, uh, so we started here, then we did this, and then we did this. But yeah, if we go right. back from here, we didn't see this one. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was a fatigue, it was an optical memory. And they call it also optical memory. You can use this also because it's a footprint. Yeah, I mean, everything can be used in different ways. Most of the time you don't like it because you want, you know, the sample is dynamic. So you do this, you see this, you do this, you see this. Here, this is not the case. You do this, you do this, or this, but then you come back down here, you don't see it. It's different, yeah. And, and this brings me to this really cascading multiple layer polymer. It's, it's a very complex chemical structure. This is part of the skin, so we, we, uh, of, of the tail. We have been cutting this tack, off. Here, these are the, the, silver, the silver spots, what I told you. This is 0 0.6, 0 0.6 millimeter. So you should do this as close as possible normally. You, you, you try this, so this was on, on this um, um, board here, and the, the wires, and with these wires, we measure the photocurrent, so we have been here a, a power supply, and then this, so the the, measure, the ampere meter, and then it went back here. So this is how the measurement was done. So I'm concluding this outstanding talk. So the skin of scorpions is a semiconductor because a semiconductor 
typically has emission, photoluminescence, and photocurrent. So therefore, the skin of a scorpion is, uh, is, is, is a semiconductor. This was not so clear before because you can have emission, but it's, it's not necessarily a semi, but it, it's a semiconductor. So it's highly sensitive to photon um, exposure irradiation for both emission and detection. Then you have what I said already, the onion structure. We, we didn't do more research in this direction, but it's pretty, pretty sure that it is multi-layered structure. Then you have multiple conductive channels. This is also this is the photocurrent, so it's going there, but it's falling down somewhere else, then it disappears, but it cannot contribute anymore. So you have different channels, so that means you don't have one conduction band. You have maybe multiple bands, multiple gaps in this material, and so on and so forth. And it's a perfect host for heteropair photonic devices, compact devices. So you can think um, a little bit out of the box. So you can use the skin, you can mimic the skin. So this doesn't matter that now I don't know Microsoft, they have to hire people hunting for scorpions and put this in. <laughs> so maybe you can, you can mimic the skin and you can do it. You, know, you can fabricate something based on the scorpion skin uh, and, and you make devices out of this. So therefore it might be important to know, you, you, you take this thing apart and you check how the skin is really layered, what's going on. Maybe this is a mixture of two polymers, maybe this is something else and so on and so forth. So it's, it's, it's a highly interesting creature, highly interesting creature. And of course, people stay away. So maybe the next thing what they do is a rattlesnake <laughs> because I think you might be the first one to measure photo kind of a rattlesnake. Um, it's, yeah, but you have to get the thing before, right? So, and I, I think it, it, it has something to do with this. We don't do things not really appealing. I mean, you know this James Bond movie when they put the scorpion in the bag and the guy was, this was the, the, one of the old James Bond from 1970 something, when Roger Moore was the Bond, the best Bond ever, yeah. Shaken, not stirred, yeah. So this, this, this was the, yeah, and he put this in the, and it was, it doesn't work this way, yeah. I mean, even not with the red, it is. Anyways, um, is, I think this is the end, probably. No, I have, um, open questions. So what is the reason for this optical sensitivity? I mean, what is really this material? Is that, is it possible, is it easily possible to mimic, to, to artificially to, to make a scorpion um, in integrated circuit? Yeah, so you put this scorpion. So maybe if you open your computer in 20 years, a scorpion is sitting in there. So who knows and waiting. So, and uh, will it work? If, if, change the scientific approach. Um, this is a little bit, this, this, this philosophy, what I told you in the beginning, if you're exposed to different things, you do different things. If I wouldn't go to Mexico, I would never measure a scorpion. Because why should I measure a scorpion? Yeah, because there are no scorpions here. Yeah? Um, shrimp is the next thing. The shrimp, so shrimp is maybe more appealing. First, you can eat it, and then you don't put it in the garbage. You can keep the shrimp skin, so to speak, and you, it should be, should be maybe similar. The crayfish, the crayfish, what is here, um, probably it's the same. You can check this. You know, so we have been thinking, so suddenly a little bit out of the box. You, you can do this, this, this kind of thing, so shrimp, crayfish, and maybe this is related because all these creatures maybe have a certain yeah, brotherhood in arms, I don't know. So, and um, the optical fatigue, we spoke about this, so needs uh, some, some analysis. So then you have apparent difference between AC and DC currents. I didn't, I didn't speak about this so much. And um, AC, DC, yeah, so it's Australian rock group or it's alternating current and direct current. So lock-in measurements are AC because you chop. And if you just use an ampere meter, it's, it's DC, but it, it, it's all right. Don't think about it, it's, it's weekend, so no, no headache, no aspirin, it's, it's all right. So, and, and then we have a lot of um, other questions. So that's, that's the final thing, I think. That's the end. Yep. So thank you. Thank you again very much for coming and for your attention. Thank you. <laughs>